my name is Laura Benoit, and I'm the McDonald International Scholars Academy Director. I'm here today with Gulchin Yela. She is the most recent winner of the Mark S. Wrighton Alumni Award. Gulchin, welcome. I'm glad to have you today. Yeah, the same here, Laura. So tell me about your current role as the founder and CEO of Patika.dev. Yeah, at Patika, uh, we are working to shrink the skills gap, especially in the technology sector. And we are mostly focused on, obviously, areas that uh, demand for talent is too high, but there are not enough people to fill in those jobs, those uh, positions. So we work with companies simply to help them create their own kind of schools to train new talent, to find new talent, and to provide employment opportunities to those new people. And obviously the people coming to these classrooms of ours, they are able to find a better employment opportunity for their lives and get skilled and, you know, just do the work of future. Uh, and as the co-founder and CEO, obviously my role includes, uh, you know, just a lot of things. Uh, we have a team of 25 people right now, and uh, just I'm trying to make sure, um, you know, both the companies we are working with, as well as the young people we are working with, are having a great experience through our services. That's great. And how do you find companies to work with? How does the, how do you work on that side of? Yeah, it is um, either the companies are approaching us with their problems, they are telling us, you know, I have been trying to fill in these positions, but simply there are not enough people mm -hmm. applying to those jobs, or even if they are applying, they are not skilled enough to be onboarded. Um, or we also approach the companies that we are seeing that are having a hard time uh, filling in those positions. And actually, the good news for us is like right now, every company is a tech company or they have to be a tech company. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of uh, positions they are trying to fill. So uh, the world is kind of endless for us, uh, but it works both ways. And that's awesome. I think it's a huge need in, in the industry and it allows you really to, to have people who would not be able to do those sort of roles um, find new and exciting careers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, the thing is, so there is this thinking in the sector like there are not enough talent or nobody wants to work. Uh, when I hear that, it is kind of um, funny to me in some sense because I have been working with wo more than 100,000 people looking for jobs and most people actually want to work in like good paying, promising jobs, you know. Uh, it is not like people don't want to work but they want good opportunities right. uh, in their lives and good news is like technology sector is providing that for us and um, just it is creating new jobs every year and uh, there is this great opportunity right now for us to upskill all these people mm -hmm. looking for better opportunities and then train them in these like company sponsored classrooms. Um, so it is a win win for both sides. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, how did the McDonald Academy prepare you for your current career? Uh, yeah, I think it's provided um, great opportunities for me. I think I want to emphasize two things. The first is, um, it was possible for me to do my MBA at Washington University uh, through McDonald Academy. So if I wasn't supported, I wasn't able to, you know, just uh, complete and even apply to MBA, to be honest, because I had a, a support to do that. Uh, and obviously, like doing an MBA at a school like this, um, it is an amazing opportunity and a privilege, to be honest. Uh, that's the first thing, like my education. But at the same time, like during the McDonald Academy, uh, you know, scholarship, I met with a lot of people, like really built my network, uh, was exposed to a lot of different high level conversations, uh, which all the scholars are exposed to right now. So I think that is really a great leadership uh, skills development opportunity to be on those tables um, at a very early age. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it really helped me uh, build my skills. What was the most important relationship you developed while you were here at Washington University? Um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, a lot of things actually. For example, the, in a few weeks, I'm going to meet with John McDonnell. I mean, just that is such a big um, privilege for me and an honor, to be honest, because I think those people are super experienced and they have done a lot of uh, work in this world, and I have a lot to learn from them. Uh, so being able to connect with those kinds of people, not only John McDonnell, but also you know, when I go to different cities for my work, like San Francisco, New York, a lot of places, and I am generally able to find a McDonald's scholar in those places and reach out to them and connect with them. I think like that is the 
biggest opportunity it provides, mm -hmm. like being, putting us in a network like this. And I am sure if one day I go to China or other places, I will also meet with a lot of scholars there. I think that network is the best part of it. When you were here at Washington University as both an MBA student and an MSW student, and you had the opportunity to interact with students from different disciplines, how did that inform your future career, your, your desire to create your own company? Uh, yeah, I think both like interacting with other scholars from different disciplines, but at the same time from different countries mm -hmm. allowed me to see like what are the uh, global problems, like global issues that we need to address. Uh, and just I think in the company I started, like it helped me to really just focus on an area that can grow a lot uh, through different disciplines, through different nations. Uh, and wouldn't be just specific to one country or one specific problem, but like can be applied to a lot of different areas. I think uh, th that was a great opportunity because that opens up my mind and just, uh, you know, even like talking about the tech talent problem, let's say in biotechnology, I mean, just there is someone I can talk about it. Um, so th that is really helpful. And your next adventure is, is here in St. Louis. Are you opening a branch of your company in, in St. Louis? Uh, we opened a branch in the U.S. Uh, in general. I mean, we are uh, working with several, like talking with uh, several employers in St. Louis uh, who are interested in uh, our model. Uh, and obviously the connections I got at WashU and McDonald Academy is helping me a lot. Uh, and yeah, just hopefully like we will be able to implement this model in the U.S. as well, which uh, there is a much bigger talent uh, problem uh, here. I think you said earlier that idea that people don't want to work and there's that pervasive uh, just thought out there. And I, I think your idea that it's not that people don't want to work, it's that people are really looking for careers that are meaningful. And your ability to close that gap for people is going to be really important. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was one of the things I was surprised when I started talking with different, uh, especially human resources departments in the U.S. I heard this a lot, like people were saying, nobody's applying to jobs, what's happening? Obviously, COVID changed a lot of things. And the new dynamics has changed it a lot that right now the power of decision making is in the uh, hands of talent, not companies anymore. They are demanding more. They are questioning what they are doing more, which is, I think, a great thing. And uh, what I see is like if companies are able to communicate with this talent about the job opportunities they have and how they can get those opportunities, uh, that uh, just if we show a way to people to get those jobs, they are very interested in it mm -hmm. because a lot of people, I mean, who doesn't want a good paying and, um, you know, just a, a, a good job that they are going to make an impact? they are going to have a good career, you know, just a lot of people are in need of it. So uh, I think just we just need to change our mindset a little bit there. So what do companies need to do in order to, to really become more attractive to the talent? Yeah, so what we do is like we help companies uh, create a pathway. So if mm -hmm. they show that, uh, hey, I'm looking for these positions, so this is the opportunity I can provide to you. I need people here. But for you to work with me, and if you don't have the skills for these roles, which there are not enough skills, we know that already. If you don't have the skills, I am willing to invest in you and I'm going to train you for these roles. And you can just complete these online courses that I have created for you, these online pathways. And I'm going to, you know, just sit down and interview you. And this is uh, opening a huge opportunity for people from diverse backgrounds mm -hmm. as well. Like, that are, you know, just generally employers tend to look at either job experience or schools and, you know, just what kind of degree these people had. But now it is not working anymore. I mean, there are not enough people because like unemployment rate is how much, like 3%, 4% right, in the right. US, you know, people have jobs already. So if we need to increase the number of people who wants to work with us, we have to show a way to those people. And this is what we do, like with Patika, actually our name means pathway as well. We are allowing companies to open a pathway and telling people, hey, just you don't need to just apply for a job, but just take my courses, upskill yourself, and I'm going to open up an opportunity for you in my company. So that's what we do. And it is great uh, opportunity for companies to, you know, connect with the community as well.
Yeah, I, I love that idea of community connection, really operating in a local way and making making a difference in, in that area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially it is important because right now there is a huge discussion about diversity, inclusion in the U United States. And uh, I mean, a lot of companies are leaving it at a marketing level, I think, but there is there are not enough actions. And this is a great opportunity for them to take action mm -hmm and really provide an upskilling and educational opportunity for a lot of people. Obviously, they can do it by themselves, but what our model is providing is doing it at a scalable way. Like, right. you shouldn't do it just once and then stop the program, right. but if you want to do it con continuously, you know, just there is a program here. So what's your advice for uh, a current McDonald's scholar in you know, in thinking about developing their career or developing their leadership skills as they as they go through WashU, being a McDonald's scholar, obviously, it is a very um, great place that they are in. They have a lot of options. So the first thing I would advise them is like realizing their options. Don't be like, okay, I have to do this, uh, or somebody is telling me to do this. This is the right way. You don't have to follow somebody else's steps or. Uh, just you don't have to do what other people are thinking that you should be doing. I think I would say like look out the opportunities, find what you are passionate about really because career is a very long way and life is also short. So you know just find what you are good at, what you are passionate at and just go for it because uh, what I see is like people tend to be very humble at McDonald's Academy. Maybe they are like seeing actually, you know, this is what I am supposed to do or I mean, you don't have to think like that. Just go big and, you know, do what you are good at um, and d discover your passion, I would say. Mm -hmm. Don't wait, it sounds like. It's yeah, a, it's yeah, advice exactly. that you don't wait till you graduate. Yes. Mm, and it rhymes. Mm -hmm. What is one of the biggest challenges you face as a leader and an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of challenges every day, obviously. I mean, what I say is my job is solving problems and just, uh, you know, I'm okay with it. Um, uh, but the biggest challenges, I would say two things. Uh, the first one is obviously prioritization because there are so many things you can do, like what you are going to focus on, what is your fight going to be? Like, that is a very important thing. Another big challenge is obviously as an entrepreneur, Nobody is telling you what to do. You have to decide what is the right, right next move. And the thing is like, if somebody was able to solve the problem you are solving, you, shouldn't, you wouldn't be here, right? right? So you are doing something nobody has done before. Right. So this is a very challenging thing, obviously, because like you are alone at that point. Like it's a completely like lonely business, I think. And, uh, but at the same time, it's thrilling, you know, like to be able to just make a change. Um, mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, it's very lonely, very hard, and uh, requires a lot of experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Uh, great question. I mean, I try to just have half an hour by, for myself, you know, just taking care of myself, my cats, you know, just having a mental space, sometimes meditate as much as possible, mm -hmm. and then just jump to work immediately, you know. So, and how do you, how do you protect your time because I imagine you get pulled in a lot of different directions as a female, non-native U.S. entrepreneur. A lot of people want your time. How do you protect it to make sure that you're doing the right things for your business and for your career? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, saying no is an important skill that I uh, am trying to even improve more. Um, but I think, like, just when you know what to prioritize, when you know what are your biggest three priorities, let's say, anything that comes to your plate and anything that demands your attention, just you look at, okay, what is it serving? Like, is it serving these? Is it helping me? Uh, I, I think that is the good thing. But if you don't know what are your biggest problems, what are your biggest priorities? Yeah, you can be pulled into a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like we, we did some of that work here at the Academy a couple years ago when we came up with the, the three pillars, and it has really helped guide us um, in, in being very clear on the mission and really serving our, you know, our scholars. Yeah, exactly, because every idea is kind of good, right? Just everybody is trying to help, like they are bringing something new to the table. They are most of the time exciting, but everything has a time, you know, just I think that's why it is good to have that exercise. 
What was one of the highlights of your experience at the McDonald Academy? I think there were several of them, but just one of the highlights is our visit to Australia uh, for a conference. And I, I think this was about mostly the friendships that I got at the Academy. I remember with two scholars, we visited New Zealand as well and then go, went to the conference from there. It was both like a great, you know, friendship uh, building and at the same time just going to one of the most important events in a, the country that I have never been before. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that was a great experience. Uh, but apart from that, I think like our Washington DC and New York visits were also great. Uh, I really enjoyed them because, you know, just being with the organizations that we look up to uh, and just being in them, listening to the leaders from those organizations and sometimes like being connected to them all through my career, like that was a, uh, that, that was some of the highlights. Did that help you develop your own leadership style? Yeah, I think from anyone that you meet, like just when you find someone that inspires you, you know, that is really helpful. And you know that you are going to be connected with that person through your career. I think uh, just it helped me for sure, finding those people who inspires me and mm -hmm. I want to be like, you know. We frequently ask our scholars to challenge themselves while they're here at WashU. Do you want to issue a challenge to the scholars? Uh, it's a very hard question. I think it can be different from uh, for everyone. Uh, but I would say, you know, just maybe uh, just write down what was the most exciting things for you when you were a child. What were you enjoying the most? Mm -hmm. And see how it is connected to your career right now. Um, and just see if you are still finding that joy in whatever you are doing right now. I think that's great advice. And do you have a similar challenge for the McDonald Academy alumni? I would say for the alumni as well, um, you know, just uh, maybe s stay connected with the McDonald Academy uh, more. Maybe they can reach to one of the scholars that they can help. Uh, and really just even a conversation about their career, what they have been through, their experiences, that can really help someone in the academy. I think uh, just maybe reaching out to you, I don't know our scholars directly, that would be a good challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think, I think people underestimate the impact that a two-way relationship can have with, with an alumni and a, and a current scholar. And, you know, if they were questioning what they're doing in their career, that conversation may actually open something up for them as well. Yeah, I mean, it happened with me, for example, like when I went to San Francisco, uh, I found Moshe. He was uh, there and uh, obviously I didn't meet him. He's uh, in a cohort previous to me. and. I reached out to him, we had a great conversation and I said, wow, why didn't I do this before? You know, why didn't I connect with him? Because we are in the same sector. He has great experience, great mm -hmm. suggestions to me. So I really enjoyed it. And at that point, I realized maybe I should have done this more and maybe alumni can do it more too. Why do you think networking is so hard for people? I think it requires time, right? Just And we are all too busy with our work and uh, it requires some prioritization as well. So I think that may be the reason. I, I think the advice I would have for the scholars and alumni is exactly what you, what you just said. That idea that you're all scholars for life and you all are connected via the McDonald Academy and Washington University. And it's easy to just pick up the phone or write an email and, and get a warm reception from, from a fellow uh, scholar. Yeah, for sure. I mean, maybe we are also afraid of it, you know, just we will shoot an email and nobody will answer. But generally with McDonald's uh, Academy, it doesn't uh, happen. Um, yeah, it, it is great. I, I just everyone that I met through McDonald Academy has been really fun and very interesting, very accomplished people. So definitely there are something to learn from anyone here. Uh, you became a McDonald Academy scholar in 2015. How have you seen the program change over time? Yeah, I, what I observe is it is growing. Uh, so that is good news for everyone. Uh, but I think what stays the same and similar is like you keep selecting really accomplished, really very warm and very humble people, I think, in general. So there is a connection there. 
Uh, so I like that this kind of really selected, very special people coming together and growing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I see. And as I see, it is more diverse too. Like at the events, just I met with some scholars that uh, their countries were not involved in my cohort, for example. So I love that, uh, seeing new partnerships build. Yeah, we added global scholars over the last couple of years, and it's been a great way for us to increase the diversity in, in the conversation in countries that we've never, you know, we've never had before. So we have a, a scholar from Cameroon this year. We have scholars from Ecuador in areas that we just, you know, hadn't had that conversation. So it's yeah. great. Yeah, that's great. We are proud to recognize you as the Mark S. Wrighton Alumni Award winner. What does this award mean to you? I think this award is obviously uh, very special to me because as an entrepreneur, most of the time what I do is, as I said, dealing with problems and uh, just sometimes I don't appreciate myself uh, or there are times that I am uh, thinking that I could do better and, you know, uh, just we are very harsh to ourselves most of the time. And just being recognized in this way uh, is a very special thing and uh, obviously it it kind of reminds me, okay, yeah, you are doing something right, you know, and just don't be too harsh to yourself. So I think that is a great encouragement. Um, and at the same time, as I said, right now my business is trying to expand into the U.S. And uh, this award obviously is helping me also open some doors and have more conversations with people. So that's great. Thank you so much for it. We are so excited that you are this year's recipient of the Mark S. Wrighton Award, and we are thrilled that you're staying connected with, with our community, and we look forward to many more engagements with you as, as the years go by. Yeah, the same here. I'm happy to be available and just meet with scholars in the coming years. Thank you again for the opportunity. Absolutely. It's my pleasure.